Okay, in the previous video, we did the anatomy of the ear. Now, yes, marks will come from just knowing the functions and parts of the ear. Ne? That, that's marks. But other marks come from the following. It comes from you knowing the mechanisms associated to the ear, for example, or the main functions of the ear, which is hearing and balance. So today, or in this video, we're going to be dealing with hearing. How do you hear? That's number one. Number two, we're going to be looking at balance. Now, these are sasa marks. Free, free, free marks. Ne? To cheer. So, that's what we're going to be looking at. Ne? Starting with hearing. So, without further ado, let's dive right into it. So, when you're listening to your latest ama piano or whatever song that you like, sound comes to you in the form of waves. And it hits your ear pinna, ne? that cartilaginous uh, part outside your uh, ear, outside your head, basically. Right? Now, your ear pinna directs those sound waves ne? into your auditory canal towards your tympanic membrane. So, basically, they travel and they're funneled through those. And sound, remember, is sound waves so it first travels on the outer ear as sound waves up until it hits the tympanic membrane now the tympanic membrane similar to uh, I, I compared usually to a djembe drum we all know a djembe drum it looks something like this oh i'm a good artist wow right so when you hit the djembe drum the skin vibrates similarly sound waves when they hit the tympanic membrane that membrane vibrates so when it vibrates now, what happens? It sends the vibrations, the, so the vibrations of the tympanic membrane caused by the sound waves from outside, from the outer ear, gets to be transmitted into the inner ear. Uh, no, the middle ear, sorry. Gets to be transmitted from the outer ear into the middle ear. And the middle ear, remember, contains your ossicles. Remember, how do I remember them? Miss ossicles. That, that's your malleus, incas, and stapes. All of them are known as all C curls, right? Good. And then what is so interesting again about the tympanic membrane and the ossicles? The tympanic membrane has a larger surface area than your ossicles, right? And that and then when sound vibrations move from the tympanic membrane, they are concentrated onto your ossicles. And then further concentrated onto the oval window right of the uh, of the inner ear so sound vibrations hit or sound waves hit the tympanic membrane vibrates the tympanic membrane and then the tympanic membrane causes the ossicles to vibrate now because they decrease in size they concentrate sound towards the oval window basically amplifying sound that is the mechanism of or the mechanism that your middle ear employs to amplify sound so they concentrate it to the oval window right now the oval window let's quickly look at our our oval window the oval window né, is another membrane located on parts of, of of the inner of the inner ear so far what have we learned sound will travel as waves at, in the outer in the outer ear in the middle ear it will travel as vibrations now the moment the inner or the oval window starts to vibrate as well causing pressure waves inside the inner ear now sound is no longer uh, traveling as vibrations now it travels as pressure waves and why pressure waves because inside the inner ear we have uh, liquids right your perilymph and endolymphs right so these liquids basically you, you cause waves and they uh, apply pressure so basically it's pressure waves now these pressure waves travel within the the ear to the cochlea the cochlea is the snail shell looker like uh, organ inside the inner ear. I'm not looking at other parts of the of the inner ear. We'll get to them later. This is the part where sound travels. Now, sound travels to the cochlea. 
the cochlea is divided into three mem um, basically uh, the three three parts three main regions now the middlemost region of the cochlea contains a receptor known as the organ of corti the organ of corti now picks up these pressure waves as stimulus right now that stimulus will get to be converted into an impulse and will be sent out via the auditory nerve to the brain which part of the brain you mustn't just say brain you must specify which part of the brain it is it's going to be your cerebrum ne? for cognition and memory and so forth so where are the impulses for hearing sent they are sent to the cerebrum which is different when we do balance but you're gonna see it now in a nutshell let's summarize ne? sound travels as waves into the so it passes the pinna and then from the pinna auditory canal from the auditory canal tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane vibrates and as it vibrates it causes uh, it transmits the sound from the outer ear into the inner ear and then the vibration now we'll have the vibrations of the ossicles ossicles the miss ossicles that is the malleus incas and stapes now the difference in surface area of the tympanic membrane the ossicles and the oval window ne? amplifies sound now this is where sound is amplified and then what happens now this sound causes pressure or oh, well the vibrations cause pressure waves from the oval window and then it travels to the cochlea in the cochlea we find the organ of corti organ of corti gets the stimulus into or converts stimulus into impulse and then to the cerebrum. Ne? Great. That is a summary. One last thing. Now, you can see now all of these pressure waves enter the cochlea, right? Most of this stimulus will be converted into basically, it will be converted into your impulse, right? Now, that's most and not all so some of the remaining pressure waves get to be absorbed by another window which is not oval oval is here now another window called the round window it absorbs all of this so the round window the round window absorbs ne? the excess pressure waves ne? this to avoid echoes basically in your inner ear this avoids echoes in your inner ear because if some of them are not uh, uh, are in excess basically it causes echoes in your inner ear so that is basically hearing in a nutshell so before we leave it so this is taken from a, a, pa a past a past paper memo right so if they ever ask you to basically uh, basically discuss what hearing is you must mention everything everything from the type of sound you get uh, in the outer ear is a wave and then it travels via the pinna via the pinna and then auditory canal where do these sound waves go to the tympanic membrane and force it to vibrate then the vibrations are passed down to the ossicles the malleus incas and staves and then during this part amplification will take place ne? amplification of sound what is amplification of sound that difference in uh, surface area of the tympanic membrane with uh, it being larger so the surface area of the tympanic membrane is larger than that of the ossicles then the ossicles also decrease in size concentrating sound to the oval 
window so the over window is a membrane that vibrates as well causing pressure waves in the inner ear these pressure waves basically travel via the perilymph and uh, or the endo uh, to the endo length and in the cochlea and then they hit the organ of corti or stimulate the organ of corti which generates impulses that are sent to the cerebrum along the auditory nerve and then the cerebrum will interpret the sound as or it will interpret the impulses as sound that's it that's how you answer a question on hearing ne? great that is hearing in a nutshell now from hearing the second function of the ear which most people don't 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 like is basically balance huh balance how does an ear play a role in balancing right let's look at it mm -hmm. mm, let's see ah. let's take this one first and then this one great now balance is divided in the ears divided into two parts so balance is divided into two parts you can balance when there's a change in speed and direction or when there's a change in the position of the head with relation to gravity basically when you are falling that's basically what i'm talking so let's look at the first one by looking at this image right here so when there's a change in speed and direction what happens now remember in your where's my, where's my inner ear yes in your inner ear right you have the semicircular canals these semicircular canals in inside your inner ear now they have an important function inside your inner ear so at the bottom of each of those semicircular canals we have receptors that are responsible for picking up when there's a change in direction and speed and then what do we call those receptors so let's dive right into it i usually cram it like this i run with a and i write it like this cram here's what here's what now in, at the bottom of your semicircular canals, ne, you have what we call the ampulla. Ne? You have the ampulla. Ne? And inside the ampulla, you have receptors called cristae. Ne? So when you're spinning around or running or changing direction and speed, basically, that's what I'm talking about. Ne? You have these you have these cristae which are receptors they pick up a change in direction and speed and then they convert that stimulus so they'll convert stimulus into impulse and that impulse travels via the auditory nerve to which part of the brain the cerebellum not the cerebrum you remember this is a reflex so when you're changing you want to balance very quickly as you're spinning right so that is a reflex ne? so that will be interpreted by what part of the brain the cerebellum not the cerebrum that is a change in direction of speed right great now the second one the second one is with regards to a change in the position of your head w relating to gravity right good now when you look right up at the semicircular canals at the bottom you have what we call the vestibule yeah? 
you have what we call the vestibule the vestibule has your circulars and utriculars so the circulars and the utriculars contain your macula the circulars and the utriculars contain your macula yeah? or your macula the macula are receptors that are responsible for picking up what for picking up the change in the in position of the head with relation to gravity so your circulars and your utriculars basically will contain receptors called the macula yeah? and then the macula will pick up the stimulus convert it into an impulse and then it will picked up it will be picked up that's the impulse gets to be transported via the auditory nerve to your cerebellum because you are you, you are basically responding uh, to 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 a change in that uh, in not not direction a change in a position of the head you are almost falling it's like sleeping in a taxi you never actually fall you, you you've seen people in a taxi uh, that, that, that 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 look like they want to they want to fall but they're not actually falling it is the macula working over time to detect that hey chief you are about to fall so that is balance in the ear in summary i can put it like this okay? we have two stimuli so stimuli okay? the first stimuli is change in position of the head with relation to gravity the second stimuli is change in direction and speed right that is the second stimuli so what are we going to do we're going to look at how all of these are interpreted interpreted yes that's the correct word so the first one okay, let's look at it so when you change the direction of your so let's see let's put it stimuli now what picks it up so the receptor so when you change direction or position of the head which one your macula your macula in the vestibule found in the vestibule ne? or you can say the circulars and the utriculars now when you change direction and speed remember you run with a crap so what happens when you change direction and speed which receptor it is your crista found in the m pula that's the one at the bottom of the three semicircular canals now we know the receptors okay let's move on what happens now after the receptors pick it up plan of action for both of them you'll realize okay man for both of them the stimuli is converted to impulse that's for both of them right so the stimuli will be converted into impulse then where does it travel to travels via auditory nerve ne? so to where to the cerebellum and the cerebellum will do what will uh, detect this uh, loss of balance and then that's it interpreting the whole situation and then send impulses back to the effector organs for you to balance and not fall for example when you're in a taxi and you're trying to sleep so that is all in all balance of the 
of the year. There's nothing to it. It is just those, right? In a nutshell, to summarize. Yeah? So, in the year, functions of the year. The year functions in, number one, hearing. Yeah? And then, balance. Right? For hearing, we have a recept sound is picked up by a receptor known as the organ of corti. Right? Where is it found in the cochlea? So that's why I always remember it like and I always say let him cook. Ne? And then for balance it all depends. Ne? If you are changing direction and speed then that gets to be picked up by what? By the crystal in the ampulla. If you are changing position of the head, that gets to be picked up by the macula. And that is that in a nutshell.